So some people on pickup truck camping uh, uh, Facebook group were curious about how my dual battery system works in my truck. So I'm going to take you for a little tour and show you how the different components of it and how it works. Okay, so this is your pretty much your standard Chevy Silverado uh, 5.3 liter, it's a 2011. Uh, most of them are fairly standard under here. Uh, here's your starting battery. The only thing that's a little different than most cars, you'll, or most standard trucks, they have another, line, another hot and actually ground line running off the battery. The reason why you want to run the ground off the battery to power your, your or to charge your second battery is so it excites the uh, um, the detector coil loop, the inductor coil loop on the ground from the battery, which tells the engine to, uh, to increase the voltage so both batteries get fully charged rather than just the starting battery. Uh, that's a kind of a GM thing. You'll have to read about, up about that on the internet to, to know about it. But I would recommend you connect both grounds together rather than grounding your charging battery to the frame. So I have a fairly basic uh, Walmart um, deep cycle battery. I've gotten different brands, but the, the I've been pretty happy with the Walmart ones over the years. Um, so yeah, you got the hot and the ground that come over to this battery. Uh, the one thing you'll notice between the hot and the ground is this this can here, this is a called a battery isolator or a relay. It's a 200 amp relay, which is a fancy word for a switch. It's an electrically activated switch that is that oh that closes the circuit, so you get, start charging once you turn the keys on. Uh, and it's just it's powered off a fuse tap off. That's a fuse off of um, I think it's the idle engine sensor. I just you have a fuse tap in there, and I have the that gives it just enough very tiny amount of current to close the switch. So that it starts charging the battery once it turns the car engine on. Um, fuse here, it's really important to have a fuse. Um, this battery is just mounted in the factory uh, battery box that you can get from um, uh, your local... Um, well, actually, it comes with the standard uh, GM trucks, at least the full-size uh, All-American package. Your model may vary. You do have to get a little block to tie down the battery. That's available at your local uh, Chevy parts store. And also a bolt has to be used to hold it down. They didn't have the bolt last time because I lost one of my bolts. But you can uh, actually use a standard hardware bolt. I think it's an M8 bolt. And I know they say you need a quarter and an uh, inch and a quarter bolt. I found you need an inch and a half bolt. Maybe your, your mileage will vary. Uh, these wires here, one goes to the CB antenna up here. Um, and then two of them are for... Uh, the uh, uh, the speaker I have under the hood to power the CB speaker, and then two actually are an override for the battery relay, so I can shut off the battery relay. I put the switch in a few years back. Sometimes I thought it helped with starting in the cold. I don't know if it really does that much of a difference. Uh, so here's the interior. The hot from the battery comes back to here, which runs into this box. This is called a low voltage disconnect. It's constantly monitoring the voltage. When it sees the voltage drops below 12.1 volts, it disconnects all the load. All the load runs from this system here, which is like the CB radio, lights in the truck cap, all the power in the truck cap, uh, the inverter power, CB radio, dash cam, and also my cell phone power. That way, I don't ever have to worry about it. If I leave accessories it's hooked up, they're not going to drain down the main battery, and if I leave them running too long, it'll just disconnect the load so it won't destroy the battery. That was a real problem I had in years past. So that's why I now have this low voltage disconnect to save to keep the battery from being destroyed by low voltage. Um, from the low voltage disconnect, I have wires going up to the front that get power all the accessories up front. I have this big wire that runs back to the truck cap, which I'll show you shortly, which powers the, few, uh, the circuit box back there. Again, it's fused for safety. 800 watt inverter, I use that for like the Christmas lights. Uh, some of the household lighting that I use up at camp. Um, I don't really need 800 watts, but I always have to upsize stuff like that because it'll hopefully last a little longer. This mess of wires here is the override for the low voltage disconnect. If the battery gets below 12.1 volts, I need a few, few minutes of extra electricity. For some reason, I don't want to start the truck up, hit that button. And also to change the voltage. I have it set at 12.1 volts. You know you can set it down lower. And theoretically, the deep cycle you can, but I have a relatively inexpensive marine battery, so I don't want to set it too low. And 12.1 volts works for me. This switch here turns on the power to the front. 
and um, you know power cell phone and the uh, dash cam it's up top here I don't know if you can't really see it but there it is I just booted up and there's my CB this other charger I usually plug in when I'm parked so I keep an eye on the starting battery because you know when you're out camping you open up the doors and close them down you don't want to drop them down too low okay so that's that so yeah that so the thing that's really critical I find is this low voltage disconnect because it really helps the battery you want the, your load to be disconnected when the battery drops below about 12 volts or even a little lower than that because you don't want to get down to 11 and a half or 11 volts and be really frying the innards of the batteries I also have a solar con uh, charger it's disconnected right now because it won't use power I don't have a solar panel permanently mounted but I you know, do use this when I'm camping in one place for a long time um, so that's that uh, here is the fuse box that controls all the lights back here. I also got a new strip of lights that hook up through this thing. They're really cool. They're, they're multicolor. I'll actually plug them in and show them to you. And um, yeah, they're color changing lights. They light up the whole back of the truck. I'm going to have it permanently hooked up to the switch. I just don't have it right now. And these other switches control all the lights in the truck cap. And they have a uh, box that controls the brightness for all the white lights. I have a fan. That plugs into that US into that uh, cigarette lighter port too. I don't use that. Um, you know that won't be permanently wired because that way it gives me choices. I also can hook it up to the rear cigarette light porter and have the fan on the back and the tailgate. So when I'm camping, I can uh, enjoy some fresh air. I'm almost at six minutes of time. Wow. Yeah. So I'm packing for camping. Uh, I just wanted to show you most of the the voltage or the. The DC voltage control system, and I think uh, that's how my dual battery system works, and uh, it works pretty well after five years of kind of building it and figuring out how all this would work. Although I also had an inverter in my old truck, but that ran off the starting battery, which worked okay, but you had to always be careful. This system, everything's automatic. You use the lights till they go out, and when they go out, you have to start the truck up. It's that simple, and everything resets automatically.